This is a tutorial on how to observe osmosis in live cells. Often model cells are used to illustrate principles of diffusion and osmosis. Look carefully at these cells. The smallest one is already turned clear. The next smallest one is clearing very quickly. The third smallest one is starting to go clear and the largest cell still largely pink. You may be wondering what are these model cells and why do they change color? The cells are built of agarose gel and then infused with sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, and phenolphthalein, which is an indicator of strong base, turns pink in the presence of a base. We drop the cells in vinegar, acetic acid, and as the acid moves from high to low concentration and enters the cell, it starts to infuse the cell with acid, donating hydrogen protons to the hydroxyl groups of the base, neutralizing the base, and the phenolphthalein goes clear. So we can use these model cells to observe the rate of diffusion and osmosis. It's interesting to see the importance of the surface area to volume ratio in these cells as well. And you can see that the smaller cells have a better ratio. And so diffusion osmosis pretty much has run throughout the cell, whereas the largest cell still has a lot of its cytoplasm unreached. And that, again, illustrates the importance of a high surface area to low volume. But let's use real cells. And in this case, we have a potato. And we chop the potato up into a little manageable cube. And we're going to take the thinnest potato chip you can imagine off of there, just a couple cell layers thick. We'll put it on a glass slide with some water and get it under medium power on the microscope. The first time you look at a potato slide, it can be a little confusing. But a little coarse focus work moving through the depths of cells starts to reveal this honeycomb of cells. And those little granules are not cells. Those are organelles. Those are leukoplasts. So if you can see the honeycomb cell walls and then the leukoplasts within, it starts to make sense. It's kind of like a bunch of glass jars carrying clear jelly beans. And that's the nature of potato cells. Cell walls, cell membranes, cytoplasm, and then these membrane-bound spaces, these organelles where starch is stored, called leukoplasts. You might recall that the addition of iodine to starch causes a color change, and this chemical interaction will stain uh, midnight blue or purple. And so if I, I've added the iodine to the potato, and now this is real time, this is not sped up, I can see that the iodine is flowing across the cell wall, through the cell membrane, through the cytoplasm, and then through the membrane of the leukoplast, and that starch is now being stained, that beautiful midnight blue or purple. It also reveals that there is no starch in the cytoplasm, and so you can see the clear spaces around the leukoplasts within the cell wall. That indicates an area where starch does not occur. So the starch does not escape the leukoplast, but the iodine can readily diffuse from high to low concentration through the cell membrane and through the membrane of the leukoplast. The next observation uses the membrane of a red onion, and I put my thumbnail right into the red side of the layer of onion and break it across my thumbnail so I can get that really nice membrane. You can see that there's some cells that are very obviously pink, and I'm gonna add water to that, and then I'll put a cover slip on it, and now I'll see some air pockets in there, and I'm really not happy with that, so I wanna make sure that I've got water throughout the slide, so I'll take a pipette and I'll just add a little bit more water until everything's nice and saturated. I'll get that underneath my microscope at medium power and from there let's go to finding a good cluster of these beautiful red onion cells. So I found a really nice batch of cells here and you can see that the pink pigments that make these cells pink are actually contained within the cytoplasm. You can also see some of the nuclei in these cells and since the cells are in pure water, the cells are hypertonic, which means water is going to flow into the cells and the cells are gonna swell up against their own cell walls. And because the membranes are pressed up against the cell walls, it makes it impossible to see the cell membrane, at least for now. If we wanna see the cell membranes, we're gonna to need to turn the osmotic tables. So I'm gonna add a little wall of salt to each side of my onion membrane and then I'm gonna take a pipette and push water through the salt to make a brine. I'm pushing that salt brine underneath the cover slip from both ends so that they join and sort of um, marinate that onion membrane in the salt brine. 
I'm going to see an osmotic flow. I'll see all this movement across of salt and everything, and I'll have to actually grab my coarse focus and readjust because the salt water is going to float that membrane. So once I've reacquired focus, I'm going to observe for what's happening. And you can see that where the, the cells were originally hypertonic and the pure water was hypotonic, the tables have turned. And now the cells are hypotonic to a hypertonic salt brine. So as water flows from high concentration to low concentration, water is going to evacuate out of the cells and into the environment. So the cells are going to shrink. So you can see now in this sped up version on repeat that the cells are losing water to their environment and they're shriveling up. What we're seeing is the loss of water from the onion cells as, as water moves from high to low concentration. So that salt brine has allowed us to really see the texture and the shape and the, the overall nature of a cell membrane uh, compared and contrasted to a cell wall. So this is one of my all-time favorite plant cell observations, the purple onion plasmolysis. It's awesome to see how putting the cells in a salt brine allows students to visualize hypertonic and hypotonic, uh, the movement of water through cell membranes, osmosis, and also some of the, the anatomical features of plant cells, the idea that the membrane is not the same as the wall. And you can see the wall maintains its rigid shape but that the membrane is very plastic or squishy. Here's the same observation sped up about uh, 500 times. And so it's important to remind students to be patient. Sometimes it takes two and a half or three minutes for this observation to manifest. And the same can be said for the potato observation. It's really awesome to see iodine moving from high to low concentration through the potato cells and then the iodine staining the starch. And it just really helps visualize the osmotic flow, but similarly, potatoes are fairly mysterious, and the iodine uh, and the staining of the leucoplast helps students visualize more than just osmosis. It also helps them visualize the structure and, and anatomy of those potato cells. Well, there you have it, observations of osmosis using live plant cells.